The advertising agency where I work sponsors a mystery show every week. The show is obvious, juvenile, and an insult to anybody's intelligence. But Tracy digs it. She has a crush on Richard Milson, the private eye who narrates the story. Get a load of these last few minutes of the show we were watching this night. A trunk with a body in it has just been mysteriously delivered to his office. Yes, there was no question about it. She was dead. Very dead. I looked at her. And even in death, she was good to look upon. Well, that's life. As I gazed down upon her classic features, I recalled the day she floated into my office. I looked at her that day, and she spelled appeal with a capital S. She spoke. Mr. Milsom, you've got to help me. I'm in desperate trouble, she said. And now, she was dead. Well, that's life. <laughs> Tenderly, I closed the trunk and walked out of the office. My secretary looked up at me in mute adoration. I was in no mood. I took her in my arms and kissed her full upon the lips and said, guard my office with your life, baby. Don't let anybody in or out. Oh, Tracy, enough's enough. Am I glad that program is over? You know that's an insult to a person's intelligence? It, it, it's so obvious. Well, it isn't obvious to me. What happened to the girl who couldn't spell? Couldn't spell? Well, didn't he say that she spelled appeal with a capital S? Well, anybody who looks like that doesn't have to spell, Tracy. Well, how did she get in the trunk? Honey, your office sponsors the show. If anybody knows, it should be you. I don't know. There's a woman who writes them, and she just brings them into the office. I never get to see them beforehand. And if she can figure out how that body got into the trunk, well, I'll be surprised. Oh, there's the doorbell, Trace. I was just going to, honey. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I'm sorry to intrude like this, but uh, I'm in a rather awkward position. Uh, I wonder if your husband could help me. Is he at home? My husband? Yes. Who is it, Tracy? It's a man in an awkward position. <laughs> yes, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, my name is Marshall, Anthony Marshall. Hi. My name is Young, Tracy Young. And this is my husband, Doug Young. Glad to know you, Marshall. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> Mr. Young, I have the apartment at the end of the corridor, and... Uh, well, I wonder if you could lend me a hand with something. I've got to move a trunk out of my apartment. A trunk? Duck! A trunk? Well, yes. I wouldn't bother you, but there seems to be no help around the building this time of night, and it's rather important I get the trunk down to my car at once. Sure, I guess I can. Doug, in O. I'm sorry, Mr. Milsom, but he can't. Uh, the name is Marshall. Oh, yes. Uh... Mr. Marshall, I see through your little plan, and my husband is not going to help you carry any kind of a trunk. Tracy, please. Yes, Chief. Now, I'm going to help Mr. Marshall with his trunk right now. Right, Chief. Uh, all right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, let's go, Mr. Marshall. Oh, thank you. You're very kind. Uh, Chief, haven't you forgotten something? Stop with the Chief business. What is it, Tracy? Full upon the lips. <laughs> not now, Tracy. I'll be back in a few minutes. his car and promptly forgot about it. But not Tracy. All through breakfast, she kept trying to find a connection between the trunk on the TV and Mr. Marshall's trunk. How obvious can you get? As I sat at my desk in the office, I was glad the show didn't affect me the way it did Tracy. Because with Mr. Marshall and a trunk, the first thing I'd be calling the police. Wait a minute. What am I doing? I'm not going to let this thing insult my intelligence. Now, suppose he did carry a big trunk out in the middle of the night. Does that mean the next thing my secretary's going to come walking in here and tell me that there's a beautiful blonde outside who is in desperate trouble and needs my help? There's a beautiful blonde out here to see you. She says she's in desperate trouble. <laughs> well, I was expecting... Who? A blonde. She didn't give me her name. Okay, baby. Uh, <clears throat> Miss Anderson, uh, send her in. <laughs> This way, please. Uh, and uh, close the door behind you. I don't want to be disturbed. Don't let anybody in? Or out. Yes, sir. 
Get a load of Raymond Bird. Just sit down, my dear. She floated into the office, and I looked upon her, and she was good to look upon. She spelled psychopathic with a capital S. From the diamonds she wore, I could tell she had plenty of sugar with a capital S. And two lines drawn through. She said her name was Cynthia with a capital S. She spelled everything with a capital S. And when she spoke, I could feel it down to the soles of my orthopedic wedgies with the built-in arch support. Mr. Young, you've got to help me. I'm in desperate trouble. I've come about Richard Milsom. Now, that's the moniker, baby. And if I take the case, my feet... Richard Milsom? You mean on our television show? I'm Cynthia Browning. Cynthia Browning, you're the one who writes the show. Well, I have a confession to make. I don't really write it at all. I'm secretary to the man who really writes it. Only he doesn't want his name attached to it. He wants to write fine, serious literature. He's always rebelled against writing such obvious tripe that insults a person's intelligence. He's been threatening for some time to escape from it all, and this morning when I went to his apartment, he was packed and gone. Well, gone where? I don't know. Well, what about the show? I mean, we've got to put that television show on every week. And with that body in the trunk last night... Oh, by the way, how'd that get there? I don't know. Only Mr. Marshall knows that, and he's gone. Well, let's find this Mr. Marshall. I mean, he just can't walk out on... Mr. Marshall? Anthony Marshall. Anthony Marshall? Well, he's the man I... with the trunk downstairs, in the car. I did it. We took the elevator down and uh, followed that elevator. Would you mind repeating that? Oh, not at all. I'll be glad to. Now, he's the man I... with... In the trunk, downstairs, in the car. I did it. We took the elevator down. Follow that elevator. That's what I thought you said. Well, well don't you understand? I helped him downstairs with that trunk of his. And, and I remember I saw it on the label. He was going to Doylestown, Pennsylvania. Oh, so that's where he went. Up to his farm. Oh, Mr. Young, we've got to get him back. And you've got to help. Believe me, Mr. Young, it's the only way. She was right. It was the only way. My car was at the curb. We could drive to Doylestown in a few hours. But what terror lay ahead, I did not know. I opened my desk and took out a handful of cleaning. I get rose fever when I drive in the country. As we walked out of the office, Sally Anderson looked at me in mute stupidity. I was in no mood. I took her in my arms with a half Nelson, made her understand I wanted her to call my home and tell Tracy I was driving across the Delaware to Doylestown, Pennsylvania. As I left the office, Miss Anderson was dragging her twisted body to the phone and dialing Tracy. And I knew there was no turning back now. I was in this up to my ankles. Hello? Tracy, he's crazy! Yes, who is this? This is, this is Sally. Who? Sally Anderson, capital S-A-L. Oh, Sally. How are you, Sally? Tracy, Tracy, I don't know what happened to him. He just shot out of here, and he said he was going to Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And the way he looked, What's he doing, crossing the Delaware? Sally, calm down. Now, where did he go? To Doylestown, Pennsylvania. And he said he wouldn't be home till very late tonight. Late tonight? Oh, no, he can't leave me here alone in this building with the murderer. With who? With the murderer. There's a man here, and Should he that puts... be with whom? Huh? Well, I think I should have said with whom. Uh, with is a proposition or something, and you have to say who, not who. What are you talking about? I'm in the building with a murderer. There's a man here who kills people and puts them in trunks. Sally, please come over here right away. Who is he, Tracy? He lives in the apartment down the hall. His name is Anthony Marshall. Is he married, Tracy? I don't think so. At least he isn't anymore. That must have been his wife in that trunk last night. Good. I'll be right over. <laughs> As the car hurled over the highway, things began to happen. <gasps> my rose feet. A bulge under my arm gave me courage. I was glad I had thought to bring my cleaning. <laughs> In the corner of my tear-dimmed eyes, I gazed at my companion. She had been strangely silent. <laughs> strangely silent except for one word. Gesundheit. It's the way she said it. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I began to wonder what Tracy was doing at home. Here it is, Sally. This is his apartment, 12C. Tracy, are you sure there's nobody home? Sally, you heard me try and call him. There's no answer. Now, we've got to get in there and find some clues and then call the police. Yeah, well, if you think so, Tracy, do you want to try some of these keys? Yeah. 
This is going key. Oh, Sally, don't say that word. I'm sorry, Tracy. Does it work? No. Here, try this one. Here, maybe if I turn the knob before I put the key... Sally, look! It's been open all the time. Tracy, there's nobody here. Of course not. The body's in the trunk. You're not paying attention. Now close the door, Sally. Hmm. The lights have been on all night. Now let's look for some clues. Sally, you look over there, and I'll look over here. Okay, Tracy. Hey, Tracy, what am I looking for? Clues. Like lipstick on a cigarette butt or on a cigar, things like that. I wonder if there's a picture of the murdered woman around here. There must be one somewhere. <gasps> there she is! Who? What, Tracy? Tracy, don't scare me! The woman he killed. There's a picture of the dead woman. Tracy, you're looking in a mirror. What? Oh. oh, gosh, my hair's a mess. Well, let's get back to work. Now, let's look and see if there's anything on the desk. Oh, there's just some papers here. That's all, Tracy. Now, look at, let's look at them. Papers are always clues. Let me see. Sally, look. What? What is it, Tracy? Tracy, please don't scare me. It's a clue. Here it is. Read it. I murdered my second wife. Oh, I know it. Tracy, we gotta do something. Sally, go right down to the street and get a policeman. Yeah, why don't we call up for one? No, let's support our local police. <laughs> now hurry, Sally. Where can I find a policeman around here? Oh, you'll find him down there putting parking tickets on cars. He's wearing a, a, a blue shirt with a, with a badge and a belt with a gun. <laughs> a brass suit and a, and, a, and a shirt and his gun. Okay, I'll be right back, Tracy. Now, let me see what this says. I murdered my second wife. The rain beat a mad tattoo on the window pane of my study. As I drew on my gloves and moved stealthily towards the bedroom, I knew in a moment that it would be over. She would never know. One quick lunge and the body into the trunk and it would be over. Slowly, carefully, I opened the door. She looked up, startled. What are you doing here? She said. What are you doing here? Yeah, I just read that. <laughs> With one quick bound, she was across the room. What do you want? She cried. Well, what do you want? Please, if you're going to keep repeating everything I say, m <laughs> m m m Mr. Mar Marshall? Mrs. Young, exactly what are you doing in my apartment? Tonight. We reached Doylestown just in time. I had run out of cleanings. And lucky for this beautiful creature who was with me, because one more gassoon bite out of her, and I would have bashed her statuesque head in. A winding road had brought us to the farm. It was deserted. We were around the back of the barn, and there before our eyes, we found what we had been looking for. It was the trunk. <laughs> Quickly, I bent over the trunk. It was locked tight. I took out my kit of tools, and together tools. we went to work. Wrench. Wrench. I don't know. Pliers. 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 No, no, no. Screwdriver. Screwdriver. <laughs> Kleenex. <laughs> It was locked tighter than I thought. I clawed at it with my bare fingers. I strained every muscle. And then with one gigantic superhuman tug, she flung it open. It was empty. Mrs. Young, exactly what are you doing in my apartment? Now, just a minute, Mr. Marshall. Take it easy. I'm warning you, don't shoot or I'll move. Don't shoot or you'll move? Did I say that right? Well, what are you doing with those papers? Papers? What papers? Those papers in your shaking hands. Uh, don't you dare shake hands with me. This house is surrounded by Sally, you murderer. Murderer? I read every word of this confession, Mr. Marshall. You killed your second wife. You beat her to death with your bare hands. Here it is in black and white. What happened to your first wife? Did you kill her too? Who else have you murdered? A very good question, Mrs. Young. I'll ask the questions. Who else did you murder? I murdered my soul, Mrs. Young. 
I murdered my conscience, my self-esteem, my sensibility, my integrity. My gosh. For 13 excruciating Thursdays, I have stabbed, strangled, and strickened maids, butlers, innocent bystanders, rich men, poor men, beggar men, thieves, and once, my dear, once even an Indian chief. A likely story. Where could you get that many trunks? Wait a minute. What's going on here? Oh, officer, am I glad to see you. This lady bothering you, mister? Me? No, officer, this is Mrs. Young I was telling you about. Who's this man, Tracy? Oh, Mr. Marshall, I'd like to present my cousin, Miss Anderson. Miss Anderson, this is Mr. Marshall, the murderer. How do you do? How do you do? Look, what's going on here? Did you bring me all the way up here for a social gathering? I got a fistful of parking tickets to give up by three o'clock, and you're wasting my time. Uh, officer, I think I can clear this up immediately. Who are you? He's the murderer. Yeah? And who are you? I'm the murderee. <laughs> murderee? W where's the body? My husband took it out of here in a trunk last night. Your husband? And where is he? He's crossing the Delaware. <laughs> Not so fast. Just a minute. Yes. Don't nobody leave the room. Yes, everybody sit down. Sit down, Sally. No, not next to me. Next to Mr. Marshall. No, please do. <laughs> Fresh. No, wait a minute. Break this up. Who murdered who and where is it? I told you, it's in the trunk. My husband carried it out of here last night. Here's a confession. Read it. What's this? I murdered my second wife. The rain fell like mad. What kind of double talk is this? You murdered your second wife, that's all I have to know. I'm calling Hummus. Uh, now, now j just a minute, officer. Don't you move or I'll shoot. Did he say that right? <laughs> all right. You want your sergeant to get all the credit for cracking this case, officer? Go ahead and call him. He, uh, always takes the credit for everything you do, doesn't he? Yeah. How do you know about that? No, I'm psychic. Pleading insanity will get you nowhere. <laughs> well, I only thought if you could solve this case by yourself, it would be a feather in your cap. Hmm. See, officer, I think that first you should establish a corpus delecti. In other words, we should first discover who murdered whom. You were right, Sally. It is whom. <laughs> Wait a minute, you two. Officer, you're not doing this right. The way they do it on Ironside... I don't care about Ironside. Richard Milsom is my man, baby. Oh, no, 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 officer. Not Richard Milsom. He's so obvious. It's an insult to anyone's intelligence. Yeah? Well, maybe you know how that body got in there. You, well, as a matter of fact, only I know. Who cares about that body? Let's talk about the one my husband took out of here last night. Oh, my gosh! The trunk! That's the trunk that my husband helped Mr. Marshall carry out of here last night. Who are you? Oh, I'm Cynthia Browning. Oh, I beg your pardon. This is my secretary, Miss Browning, Mrs. Young. How do you do? And this is Mrs. Young's cousin, Miss Anderson, Miss Browning. How do you do? Break it up. If you people don't all keep quiet, everybody gets a ticket. Now, what's in that trunk? A body. That's the body my husband helped carry out of here last night. I know all about it. I've got the confession right here. The body's in that trunk, the body of his second wife. The, the officer, you may not realize it, but this is the precise moment in television mystery construction at which you stride dramatically across the room and open the trunk. It's a good idea. I was just going to. That's it, officer. Now, slowly, you bend over the trunk. A little music for accent. Beads of perspiration stand out on your brow. Well, it's kind of hot in here. And then with one quick lunge, you fling back the top. Ah, body! That's it. That's the body of his second wife. Good heavens, there is a body. And a body needs a body. Need a body crawl. When a body meets a body. Coming through the rye. I don't usually go around 
popping out of trunks. I leave that to the show business side of my family. But I didn't want to scare Tracy into realizing that mystery shows are just products of somebody's imagination. And if she insisted on watching them, not to get so personally involved. I thought I had succeeded. And so he realized Patricia, his ex-wife, was blackmailing him into bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. <laughs> there was only one thing left to do. Poison her. Poison her. <laughs> he had the perfect plan. Patricia was a habitual tea drinker. He would put strychnine in her sugar bowl. Sugar bowl. <laughs> How corny can you get? Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh. Oh. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh. All right. <laughs> Hi, Tony. Oh, hi, Doug. Tracy. Hi. Gosh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was so late. I hope I didn't get you out of... Oh, no, no. That's all right. We're just watching all television. Yeah, well, I, uh, I just wanted to return the sugar that I borrowed this morning. You know, good oh. neighbor thing. Okay. Sugar. Blackmail. <laughs> Strickman. Ex-wife. Doug. Uh, goodbye, Tony. <laughs> What did I say? 